In our initial consultation, a, a, the patient, a 59-year-old male, presented with no medical contraindications and uh, presented for an evaluation of his failing dentition. The patient exhibited multiple missing teeth in both arches, failing restorations, a moderate periodontal disease, and worn dentition. He did not want to be without teeth for any period of time during treatment and desired a prosthesis that would not compromise his sense of taste or cover the palatal area, as he had a very strong gag reflex. The patient exhibited rather prominent buccinator muscles, very well-defined wear facets, and broken down restorations, consistent with the pattern of observation of bruxing, clinching, and other paranormal muscle activity. Following a uh, consent discussion of the ABCs, alternatives, benefits, and complications of the treatment, the patient agreed to extraction of the remaining teeth, implant placement, and fixed prosthesis on the upper and lower arches. The treatment plan also included a trial PMMA upper and lower prostheses, which would be worn to verify the final restoration design. Uh, to begin the surgical procedure in the upper arch, the patient's remaining upper teeth were extracted, six implants were placed, and it was determined that sufficient primary stability was achieved for provisionalization. After the implants were placed, a pre-made denture was converted to serve as a screw-retained maxillary prosthesis. In the second portion of this procedure, and again, we're not going to focus so much on the specifics of the surgical solution as we are the prosthetic solution. The patient's mandibular teeth were in a second visit extracted and implants placed. The most distal implants required angle abutments as they used the um, all-on-four protocol with uh, 30 degree angle distal abutments to establish a parallel platform and a line of draw uh, that would be needed to seat the prosthesis. This was accomplished with the 30 degree multi-unit abutments. The multi-unit abutments were also delivered in the anterior to uh, match the height of the posterior 30 degree angled abutment to create a level platform. The surgical sites were then sutured together. To begin the conversion process for immediately loading a temporary appliance, the intaglio surface of the pre-made mandibular denture was filled with a thin coating of quick-set PVS material, and the appliance was seated in the patient's mouth. The purpose of this was to identify the areas where the implants were actually located. We would then drill a access hole all the way through the denture so that the metal cylinders, the metal screw retained cylinders that would then connect to the implants themselves, and these were at multi-unit level, would uh, pass through the hole drilled in the uh, denture. I want to clear this point up that we took the time to be able to take each of those cylinders and make sure that the cylinders cleared uh, through, in, through the denture and did not interfere with the occlusion because it's important that the patient be able to fully close the mouth to their original vertical dimension as marked with a dot on the nose and a dot on the chin and make sure that we maintain that vertical dimension. With all retention cylinders in place and cut at an appropriate height, calipers were then used to measure the prior marked vertical dimension. With proper occlusion established and the VDO verified, and the screw retained cylinders not touching in occlusion, the screw retained cylinders could then be processed into the conversion denture. This was done in the mouth, one by one. First, create a wooden plug out of a cotton tip applicator. Uh, I would break off a little piece of that material and it just happens that the diameter of the plug is the same size as the diameter of the metal cylinder, such that it would protect the cylinder as the triad materials filled in the hole. The triad material, the triad gel, was used to be able to fill each of the, around the circumference carefully around each hole around each one of the cylinders. Uh, each hole was sequentially filled and light cured. The multi-unit abutment screws were loosened and the conversion denture was removed, picking up the metal cylinders in the prosthesis. After that is finished, a handpiece and burr were used to shape the intaglio surface uh, reduce and then polish the conversion denture with the screws in place. Now back into the mouth, the, the metal cylinders are now attached to the conversion denture and the conversion denture can be taken back into the mouth, checked for occlusion, and uh, the final polishing can be completed. 
After about six months following surgery, during which time the occlusion was tested, the, the uh, construction of the DFINITY prosthesis was initiated. The laboratory supplied a implant verification jig for both arches based on the abutment level impressions that were taken with open tray impression copings at the surgical appointment. We will try that into the patient's mouth and then we will take a triad material and lute each of those segments together. The lab produced custom impression tray with holes cut for the open tray impression copings was filled with VPS material. Care was taken to avoid obstructing the holes for the impression copings. The retention screws holding the impression copings in place were then loosened and the tray removed. The procedure was repeated for both arches. The lab provided upper and lower screw retained tri-ends with teeth set on wax. So this then is the next step. We've returned back our verification jigs. We've given the lab a Facebook transfer to tell where our centric positions are. And we're going to receive a maxillary and mandibular uh, wax try-in such that we can address their occlusion aesthetics form and function in the patient's mouth. The setups were tried in and verified for aesthetics, vertical dimension, occlusion, and overall patient approval. The lab fabricated and scanned master casts for upper and lower arches based on the final impressions containing the implant verification jigs. The maxillary and next maxillary and mandibular PMMA provisional implant prosthesis were digitally designed and milled for clinical use. The patients wore the PMMA full arch upper and lower prosthesis for about three months, during which time the occlusion was adjusted to optimal function. Following the uh, completion of the PMMA trial period, the appliances were returned to the lab to be digitally scanned. Quickly, Gladwell was able to return the Bruxer solid zirconia full arch implant prosthesis which were milled based on the approved PMMA provisionals. The final restorations were delivered without complication as their design had been confirmed by the trial period the patient spent wearing the PMMA provisionals. The patient was very pleased with the remarkable results. The evolution of a monolithic prosthetic material has brought us to the full arch restoration milled from a single block of solid zirconia. Delivering remarkable aesthetics, a precise fit, and exceptional strength and durability, the Bruxer full arch implant prosthesis is a viable solution for treating fully edentulous patients in need of a dual arch reconstruction.